they were able to relate what was going on in the street to the music. So suddenly, they could tie in what Dr. King was saying with a Bob Dylan song, and now you've got something more powerful than the two separately. Now you're starting to think about this stuff in a whole different way. And it spread like wildfire. And then it started spreading across the country. In a country as vast as the US, each city had distinct political and social issues, and these were reflected in the local music scene. The industrial city of Detroit was home to some of the loudest, wildest bands in the country, such as the Stooges and MC5. It was a far cry from the love vibes of flower power. Detroit was a dynamic city at that time, and working in the factory was portrayed as a bang, 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 bang. And it was sort of a bang, 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 bang. And that got into their music, you know, the, the hard driving rhythm. Kick them out, don't, don't give up. The MC5 added some urban grit to the Summer of Love soundtrack with high energy tracks such as Kick Out The Jams. There's an old saw that the Summer of Love didn't make a stop in Detroit. <laughs> um, we tried. We had our hippies, you know. We believed that uh, uh, peace and love were, were better than hate and, and violence. If you wanted the peace and love, you could get it here, too. There were, you know, we love you, peace. Well, there was also... In Detroit, it was a different vibe. Here, people wanted like a little bit harder rock and roll than that. <laughs> We're not that laid back here, you know. San Francisco bands, to me, they all sounded like folk guitar players with electric guitars. Like they didn't, the rhythm sections were always terribly weak, and they just didn't, they didn't have that 